The town of York, in Western Australia, is perhaps one of the most important inland towns, and it was the first to be established after colonisation in 1829. The town site was officially gazetted in 1836, but it was already in the process of being developed before being given this official sanction. To pay for the maintenance of a road through to Perth, a toll was charged when travellers reached Mahogany Creek. After convicts arrived in the colony in 1850, the toll was dropped, as there was now finally a source of reliable cheap labour to work on the road. Floods, fires and attacks by Aborigines made the York Road a dangerous place to travel, and a number of settlers died after being speared by native tribesmen. The convicts, who had been the impetus behind the removal of the toll, turned out to be a two-edged sword. Some of them escaped, and took to robbing travellers on the York Road, and even murders were committed by former inmates. Several wayside inns were established to cater for travellers' needs, but due to changes in the route the road took, some of these inns very quickly found themselves out of business. The route that's in use today along the Great Eastern Highway was more or less firmly established by 1850. Explorer J.S. Clarkson had planned to call the town Yorkshire after the county in England, but the name was shortened to just York. The Aboriginal name for the area is Balladong. The railway from Perth was completed in 1886 and York became a stepping off point for people heading to the goldfields further east. This saw sustained development in the town and many of the heritage buildings that line the streets today date from the early 1900s. York is a popular day trip from Perth and is one of the best preserved historic towns in Australia, with only Charters Towers in Queensland offering a better example of the architecture of the period. The town is classified by the National Trust. York sits on the banks of the Avon River, which is, in fact, the same river that's called the Swan River further along its course. When the Avon was first named, it was not realised that it was the same river that flows past the city of Perth. On the town side of the river, there's a nice grass park with toilets, barbecues, tables, seats, shelters and a children's playground. A footbridge leads across the river to an overnight self-contained RV rest area. York's first swinging bridge was built in 1888 and in 1896 it was moved to the current location. It has been rebuilt a number of times due to floods. It was the first bridge of its type built in Western Australia. It fell into disrepair and was closed by the early 1980s, but was restored for the centenary in 1988. Today, the bridge is useful for walkers and is an interesting tourist attraction. Although called a swinging bridge since about 1890, it is in fact a suspension bridge. The York Town Hall dominates the main street and is one of the most ornate and impressive halls in any inland town in Western Australia. The hall's history dates back to 1886 when the first plans were drawn up, but at the time a suitable site could not be found. When the railway to the goldfields eventually went through Northam instead of York, the idea to build a hall was shelved. By 1910, things were changing economically, and in May of the following year, the hall's foundation stone was laid, and by the end of November 1911, the hall was open. Today, the hall is used for various community events, and it houses the local visitor centre. It's a particularly interesting building to wander through. 
there are many good attractions along York's main street, and one of the best known is the York Motor Museum. The Motor Museum opened in 1979 and was originally privately owned. Today, it's operated by a not-for-profit community organisation. Over the years, a number of vehicles have been donated to the museum, and it's a fascinating example of some beautifully restored vehicles. Even if you're not particularly interested in veteran and vintage cars, you can hardly fail to be impressed by the care and dedication involved in bringing vehicles from our history back to life. Another interesting museum, just up the road from the Motor Museum, is the Courthouse Museum. This building also houses an art gallery, and is certainly worth visiting while you're in town. The Residency Museum is not quite in the centre of town, but over the river in Brook Street, close to the Old York Hospital. York is certainly a prime destination for anyone who's interested in local history. Back on the main street, there are other attractions, including some unique shopping experiences. One of the must-visit shops would have to be the Penny Farthing Sweet Shop. If you're 6 or 66, this is one place that it's really hard to walk by and not go inside and have a look at all those sweet treats. At the time of making this video, Penny Farthing has been operating in York for over 16 years. Just up the road is the Good Life Store, which sells eco-friendly products and a variety of healthy food that you might just need after a visit to the sweet shop. There are plenty of other shops to explore, including cafes, bakery, op shops, and a local IGA supermarket. If you're looking for accommodation in town, then it's hard to go past Settler's House as it's located right in the heart of the main shopping area. Further out are more tranquil options, such as White Gum Farm. Here, there are reasonably priced on-site accommodation options, or you can head out there with your own caravan or motorhome. We'll be doing a separate video on White Gum Farm, as there are many different activities you can take part in, including swimming, fishing, four-wheel driving, and even flying lessons. It's also worthwhile checking out the different churches that are in and around York. These range from the ornate and impressive St. Patrick's Catholic Church, near the centre of town, to Holy Trinity and uniting churches, and the much more humble buildings like St. Andrew's Bush Church, a few kilometres out of town. Also located in the town is the Bushland Garden. The site was once a quarry, and later became a dumping ground for the ruins of a local hotel that was damaged during the Meckering earthquake. There are paths leading around the garden and a couple of gazebos where you can sit and just relax. The garden is founded on the principle of using no water except during the initial establishment of plants and incorporating plants that people can easily grow in their own gardens. There are a good variety of different flowering plants in the garden and if you have limited time and want to see a good collection of native plants in bloom without having to drive miles and miles through the countryside then this is a great spot to come and explore. Another place we recommend that you check out while you're in town is the Mount Brown Lookout. The Lookout offers stunning views over the town and surrounding farmland. It's a nice place to visit at any time of year, but especially so during wildflower season, as there are also golden fields of canola flowers stretching out to the horizon. Just below the main lookout is a turn off to the picnic area, where there are shelters, seats, tables, a barbecue and toilets. With so much to offer visitors, it's little wonder that York is such a popular tourist destination with a good selection of accommodation to fit any budget, interesting shops, museums, attractive parks, wonderful heritage architecture, and surrounded by some glorious scenery, York should definitely be on your list of places to visit.